Hello and welcome, my name is QB. In this video, we are going to learn how to build ourselves a door that we can only unlock by using a passcode. But what makes this security machine so incredibly convenient and easy to use is we can actually change the code without needing to move any blocks inside the machine. Here, let me give you a small demo on how this bad boy works. Here is our lever locked passcode system with each lever numbered to make our lives a little easier. Over on the right here is our door, which is obviously locked shut and can only be opened by entering the correct passcode with our levers. So let's do that now. Our secret passcode is 1247. So we flick the levers under their corresponding numbers and our door automatically opens right up for us. On the other side of your passcode locked door can be absolutely anything you desire. A vault full of your personal prized possessions and loot, or possibly even an entire area you want locked off and secure. Once we got what we've came for, we can start making our way back. This particular redstone machine disables closing the door from the inside, acting much like a vault, as we've preferred to keep the redstone behind this solder contraption as simple and as easy to build as possible for you. As we exit the room, we now decide to change up the passcode for our door. This process can only be done when the passcode has been correctly entered, represented by our unlocked open door. Changing your passcode is as easy as this. We simply press this button right here, and once the light above the button stays lit up, that means the machine is simply ready for your new code to be entered. This time I want a shorter passcode, being 46, so I make sure I only have lever 4 and lever 6 active. Once I'm happy, we simply press the button one more time, and the light turns off, meaning we're no longer changing our password, and the machine saves our new passcode of 46. The moment an incorrect passcode is entered, the door will close. That simple. It is possible to have more than seven levers for your passcode, but we'll cover that in detail later on. For now, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, so we'll be following a seven lever lock to keep things simple. Before we start, I do hate to point out the obvious, but yes, this is Minecraft. Blocks can be broken, surprise. So if you're legitimately relying on this to keep other people out of a room or particular space on a server, I'd recommend any form of world guard or block protection, so this could then work like an absolute charm in multiplayer. Remember, you can choose to tell the passcode to any selected number of people you wish. But if you're after this machine's novelty factor and wish to use it because it's just cool, or for any reason at all, please come join me as we begin to build this bad boy together right now. For this tutorial, I'll be using a combination of different wool colored blocks for the redstone to sit on. I'd highly recommend you use the same colors as I do. If not, that's fine, but consider yourself warned. The redstone in this machine does indeed go underground, so to make sure you're building your version at ground level, you'll need to begin by digging out a hole exactly 18 blocks wide, 16 blocks long, and 3 blocks deep. Go ahead and do that now. Any side with 18 blocks width can be marked as the front. I've marked out a starting point where we'll be placing our first block, bottom left, 3 blocks in. We'll first be working on the floor. Start this exactly three blocks above our marked position. Now continue to turn it into a 12 block wide, three block long platform. Now for the wall. This will be five blocks high and 12 blocks wide. One block from the far right of the wall, make a hole for a door. Behind the door here, make another wall six blocks in length.
Underneath that wall, place in six blocks. We should be left with a hook corner like so. Now continue as we wrap the floor around our second wall. Time to set up the wall's features. Start exactly here with a row of seven levers. Go ahead and number each lever with a sign. Now follow what I do here, two blocks to the right of lever seven. Throw in your iron door. Behind each lever on the other side of the wall, place a redstone lamp. Now we're going to build up the foundations and the redstone behind the wall. We'll be doing this simultaneously throughout the next few steps, as this will be the redstone machine itself. Begin with a row of seven observers placed above each redstone lamp. Make sure you do this directly above each lamp so the observers are facing upward. Double check the observers have their arrows facing upward. Place a row of white wool above the observers. Now for a row of face down sticky pistons. We're going to make another row of observers behind the sticky pistons. Make sure you do this from where I stand to ensure they're facing toward the front of the machine. Continuing on, behind our bottom row of observers, place a row of outward facing standard pistons. Below them, another row of observers. Check that their arrow is facing outward like so. Now for another row of observers, this time face down in front of the pistons. Again, double check they're facing downward. Throw in a row of sticky pistons here behind these observers. Behind these observers, a row of obsidian followed by a row of redstone blocks below. Now to start on the circuitry with some more white wool. Start this three blocks away from the underneath of the far right block of redstone. Extend it so it's eight blocks total in width. Place down a redstone repeater here, facing left, followed by a line of redstone dust. Moving on, follow along very carefully as we add in more redstone with a lime colored foundation.
make sure that when you place this observer, it's facing upward. Face a redstone comparator toward the sticky piston. Press it once. Ensure those three repeaters are facing the same way I have them. Again, time for more redstone on a new foundation, this time coloured purple. Follow carefully. Face this comparator the same way I've done. Same deal, continuing with the purple foundations and its redstone. Face this comparator like so, and this repeater like so. Then starting from the left here, slowly place in a row of redstone across this purple foundation. You must do this part very slowly so multiple standard pistons don't move simultaneously or the machine will malfunction. Double check that this entire row of standard pistons are down and don't have their back up against the white wall. If any are up, that's fine, but you must replace each of them back down so their back is up against the observers. We are almost there. Again, more redstone, new red colored foundation. Head over to one block behind the iron door and it's underneath here, we'll be placing our first block of red wool. Continue carefully as we build up the red foundations. Now for the redstone. Make sure this repeater is facing toward the floor like so. Placing down this redstone torch will open your iron door just above. Congrats, your machine is now ready for its first passcode to be set up and I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that right now. We will need to move some blocks in the machine but the first initial passcode setup is the only time we need to do this. For now, ignore the item frames. As we can clearly see, we have seven levers. If we go behind the wall following the same row as the levers, we'll see these redstone blocks over on the other end. Note how there are seven of these too, and how above each, I've labeled them one to seven with a sign. Lever one is directly opposite redstone block one. Same deal with the other levers. I'm going to set up an easy passcode for us to boot up the machine with. I'll be openly showing the passcode on these item frames above each corresponding numbered lever. Levers marked green will be the ones we flick during passcode entry. As we can see, for our first code, every second lever will be the ones we activate. So how do we tell this to the machine? Well, let's head around to the numbered blocks of redstone. For demonstration's sake, let's display our desired passcode on this side too, starting at number one again. For each green marker in our item frames, we'll need to move the corresponding redstone block forward. So let's go ahead and do that now. Thank you. 
see how only the moved redstone blocks are the ones below our green markers. That means only the levers on the other side of the wall following that exact row will cause a reaction in the redstone circuit. We can now see our door has automatically closed, meaning our manual entry of our first passcode has booted up the machine and is now ready for use. Since our passcode is every second lever, or 246, those will be the levers we activate. And our door opens, since we've put in the correct passcode. Any incorrect lever that's flicked on the wall, and the door shuts. Now this is a very simple passcode, and the fact it's a pattern makes it quite predictable. So together, we're now going to change the passcode. However, before we can change that, we need to show the machine you are the owner of the current passcode that has been set. Go ahead and enter the 246 code now. Above our current passcode here, I've made a new row of item frames that will represent my new code that I want the machine to remember. For this part, you can now freely choose whatever code you desire, but I'm going to come up with a passcode that's a little stronger this time. Once you're happy with your new passcode, go ahead and press the button near the door to let the machine know you are ready to change your passcode. The machine tells us it's ready for the new code when the light above the button stays on. Now we simply enter our new code. I double check it matches the passcode I've displayed. When you're done and ready, hit the button once more to save your new passcode. Since the correct passcode is now entered, the door stays open. Any changes at all in the entry and the door closes shut. Once you are confident you can remember your code, go ahead and get rid of any visible evidence of your passcode. Personally, I like to leave all my levers off when not using the door. I do recommend having your passcode written down or shown somewhere safe, just in case you forget. Now, if you desire more levers for your passcode system, simply replicate the pattern we've done behind each lever to have a code up to 15 levers strong. That's a max potential of 32,768 different possible passcode combinations. That's a lot. If this is something you're interested in, you'll need to reset your machine manually, which is no biggie. To do this, check your cauldron is up off the sticky piston below it, Make sure all blocks of redstone are under the obsidian. Remove this row of foundation and redstone dust. Any standard piston up, move back down, facing the same way as before. Place back down this row of purple foundation. Very slowly add the redstone along it again, making sure any standard piston moved up is moved back down. Check your door is wide open and then the same process follows as before. We choose a code and replace the redstone blocks forward beneath the green markers and simply test to make sure it's functioning. If you've gone wrong somewhere with extending your passcode and the machine isn't functioning properly, that's fine. Just start from a point in the tutorial you are confident with, with your extended version at the ready. I must give a monstrous thanks to a team member of mine, Lysis, for the design of this wonderful contraption. It took us both months to refine and get this machine ready for use, including this entire video. So any support at all is super, super appreciated. I do have plenty of other redstone tutorials over on my channel in case you are thirsty for more. So until I see you in the next video, goodbye.